welcome back to Coping with Katie Part 3. Today we are going to talk about managing big feelings in kids, specifically worries. Worrying is defined as giving way to anxiety and unease um, or allowing one's mind to dwell on troubles. We know this is especially relevant to today's time with the news broadcasting all kinds of things that sometimes are so scary and um, make people feel uneasy. So today we are going to talk about some strategies to help kids manage their worries. Um, one idea is allotting a specific worry time. So from 4 o'clock to 4.05, this is your time when you can talk about all the things that worry you. Um, but at 4.05, we're going to stop and put those worries on the back burner. Um, a second time is giving a kid a worry journal and giving them the opportunity to write or draw their worries in there. And they can either share that with you or keep it to themselves or maybe they want to tear out the pages and rip them up. Anything goes. The third tip is creating a worry monster. Um, I made this out of a Kleenex box and you can make it as cute or as ugly as you want. Mine's kind of in between. Um, and this just gives kids a concrete way to kind of release their worries. So I actually have some real examples from some school age kids, um, some of the things they worry about. So I'm just going to feed them to the monster as I read them out loud. All right, getting a flu shot. Worrisome. School. When my family and pets are sick and die. Moving school districts. The dark. Making friends. I get scared of math, relatable. I worry about medicine, yuck. And I get scared of bad guys and bad girls. Um, so with this one, going back to the importance of limiting kids' exposure to social media and the new. Lastly, we're gonna go over some of my favorite reads when it comes to um, worrying. We have Edna by Susan Paradis. A great one. Um, this is a workbook, What to Do When You Worry Too Much, and it's actually by Don Hoogner and illustrated by Bonnie Matthews, A Kid's Guide to Overcoming Anxiety. And lastly, and we're actually going to read this one together, um, it's one of my favorites, I just kind of found it, Jonathan James and the What If Monster by Michelle Nelson Schmidt. All right. Some what-if monsters like to hang out and fill up our heads with worry and doubt. They are sneaky and quiet and quick as a blink. The words that they whisper can change how we think. Jonathan James heard those words full of dread and all those what-ifs got stuck in his head. What if you tumble? What if there's wind? What if you slip and your knee gets all skinned? What if they giggle? What if it's chilly? What if you jump and look really silly? What if it's hard? What if you're bad? What if they laugh and make you feel sad? What if it's ugly? What if it stinks? What if that's what everyone thinks? What if it's yucky? What if it's icky? What if mom yells because you're too picky? What if it's dark? What if it's scary? What if there's something giant and hairy? What if you lose? What if you're last? What if you're slow and never get fast? What if she laughs? What if she runs? What if she thinks you're not any fun? Now wait just a minute. I have something to say after hearing what ifs all through the day. I hear all your worries. I hear all your claims. But what if you're wrong? Asked Jonathan James. What if I climb to the top of that tree and I never slip or skin up a knee? And what if I jump right into that pool and everyone thinks I look really cool? And what if baseball is nothing but fun and I end up hitting a triple home run? And what if my drawing goes up on the wall and everyone thinks it's the best one of all? And what if I taste some of that food and it puts my mouth in a really good mood? And what if I run in a really big race and have a great time no matter what pace? And what if I sleep and have the best dream that monsters are sweeter than they all seem? 
And what if the chance I take in the end is just how I find my very best friend? The end. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Coping with Katie, helping kids manage big feelings, specifically worry. We'll see you next time.